With films like Hostel, The Hills Have Eyes, of course, the Saw franchise, there's a growing trend in horror to really freak out film goers, film goers with uh, scenes of blood and torture. And this movement marks the birth of a new group of directors, the Splat Pack, they like to call themselves. And they're pushing the horror envelope more than any of their predecessors. But are these new films substituting scares for sadism? It's time to bite into it. Turn off the lights. It's the loop. Joining us tonight is a member of that oh-so-illustrious Splat Pat director of Saw 3, Darren Bozeman is back for more. And from our G4 studios, a man that, well, gives me nightmares, our own resident movie madman, Chris Gore. Welcome to The Loop, gentlemen. Uh, Darren, I'm going to start with you, but before, I have to go to Chris so that he can point to the camera like he did uh, during rehearsal like a couple seconds ago. Let's see the point. Is that a new thing for you, Chris? Or? That's a new thing, okay, yeah, just bring for today. The, save that, bring it back for DV Tuesday for me, all right, buddy? Okay. All right, Darren, I got to sorry to throw it under the bus, Chris. All right, Darren, got to get to the Saw franchise, because this is a film that, that some people say this is clearly just an evolution of horror, and others say, no, 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 this, is, this has redefined the genre as we know it. Where do you stand on this one? Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you see trends in horror films. Uh, it's not like horror has suddenly come back. It's always been there. Just sometimes it kind of goes underground for a while. I mean, it's been around since, you know, early days of cinema with, with like, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and all of these other films. In the 70s, it was huge. These types of films were huge with, you know, Henry Port, the serial killer, and, and Last House on the Left. And the trend is back. It just but, but looking at the horror genre, I mean, it's been around, as obviously it has had its own evolution. Where do you think Saw fits in as a franchise? Is it, is it different from the horror of days past? Is it something new? No, I think, I think what it did is I think Saw proved that uh, you can release an R-rated movie, a hardcore R-rated movie, and it has its audience. You know, I think there was a trend for the last couple of years of doing these PG-13 kind of cookie-cutter horror films. And uh, Saw proved, no, go, go straight to the hardcore fans. Go to the gore hounds. Right. Forget the tweens. Let's yes. give the people who have that twisted sense of uh, they, they need to see the crimson to be happy. Let's give them what they want. Exactly. Chris, what do you think? Though? I mean, that's, that, that's, that, it, it's, it's the way the franchise is going, but I think it's kind of a slippery slope. Is it possible to maybe push audiences too far? Do you think that could happen here? Well, first of all, uh, with all due respect to Darren, I refuse to watch the trailers for Saw 3. When I see the trailers for Saw 3, I change the channel. Uh, basically, because I'm sick of uh, so much being given away in, in the trailers. You know, I want to be surprised going to the movies. So, but yeah, I think it is possible to go too far from the standpoint of it can get boring. For example, um, I'm going to tell you a little personal story. I used to have a girlfriend who liked to be naked all the time. Not just sleeping naked. I mean, she would walk around the apartment naked constantly. You say right? as if there's a problem you're, here, yeah, Chris. You're, you're thinking to yourself, naked girlfriend walking around, awesome. Right. No, it gets boring. I don't want to be bored by my naked girlfriend. You know, I want to be teased a little bit. Same thing with horror films, you know. Uh, too much What if she upped the ante, boring. though? What if she upped the ante and brought in, like, 15 of her naked friends? Well, that's different. I haven't seen 15 naked women. Well, okay, but, but Dar I, now, Darren, you guys are trying to up the gore ante, right? So you're not seeing the same old headshot of the same old severed limb, right? Right. Um, you know, every film we try to push the envelope as, as far as we can do it. And it's kind of this, this, this new trend of one-upmanship where uh, we, we always try to, to go further than the film before us. You, so. I mean, yeah, there, was, there was a story I was hearing about a, a Splat Pat director calling another buddy and saying, hey, we just ripped 15 piercings out of somebody's body. Can you beat that? Could you enlighten yeah. us on that one, Darren? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, there, there's kind of a, a, like a, a very friendly rivalry going on between like myself and Eli Roth and all of those guys. And uh, we got really excited and Lee and I called, called uh, our friend Eli and uh, had to tell him about the, the scene where we're ripping chains out of people. It's just like this friendly rivalry that we have, trying to uh, one-up each other in the films. But Chris, you're saying that rivalry could get boring to watch on screen. Well, I mean, the thing is this. I mean, actually, uh, you know, these films are, in a sense, torture porn. And I don't mean that uh, there's bad torture porn, to me, Wolf Creek, and then there's stuff like Hostel and Saw. I happen to be a fan of the Saw films, because there's more going on beneath the surface. Uh, you know, um, here we're living in an age where torture is actually part of our uh, U.S. strategy in Iraq, and, and I think the Saw films comment on this in a humorous way, and, and also the Saw films, what they do is, there's, there's a moral message underneath them. So, uh, But I do think that, you know, more gore is not necessarily a good thing from the standpoint of it doesn't make the film more scary. I've seen plenty of gory horror films that were just 
disgusting. It doesn't mean they're great. I mean, I, I looked at recent examples, the, the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Sure. Boring. Or even, even all of so Japanese fantastic. horror films that go for the psychological thing as right. opposed to the gross out. I guess, I mean, there's well, obviously different genres within the horror genre. But, Darren, where do you go from here as a filmmaker? What can you do to, to elevate horror, to take it to the next level? I mean, I, the first, I mean, hitting on the first thing, have we gone too far? My answer is no, we haven't gone far enough. Um, you know, I think that, that the current trend in this genre of these torture films, of yeah, trying to be brutally realistic, showing torture in the most extreme fashion, that's one subgenre of horror. Sure. Uh, some of the most disturbing films I've ever seen don't have violence in it, don't have nudity, don't have any of that, but they stay with you and are disturbing. So I think, do, do we have to continually push the gore envelope? No, there's, there's many other things that I can do to offend people. All right. Well, we're going to turn this into a very special snuff loop, Chris. If you just stand very still, we have a, a gunman waiting off to the side, and, <laughs> and we're going to end this bad boy. No. I want to thank Darren and Chris for keeping us all in the loop. Look, you know, trends in movies, they come and go, but it's inevitable that future horror films, they're going to continue to push the, the borders, really, of what's acceptable. It's, it's what gets people talking, you know, and that's, that's what I look forward to every day. So that's what happens, folks. <laughs>